A Court of Appeal Justice speaks out on delays in the justice system. The Minister of National Security on board with calls for a gun amnesty period. A setback in shutting down cash for gold businesses. Still more questions than answers surrounding the introduction of value-added tax and the showdown for the next National Spelling Bee Champion. We have those stories and more coming up tonight. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Christina McNeil, and MB12 Weekend starts right now. Again for joining us. A sitting Court of Appeal judge opening up about the inner workings of the appeals court. Justice Kay Neville Adderley revealing that even the nation's highest court is taking a hit due to late transcripts and an often delayed justice system. Jasmine Bonmi has the details in this report. Justice Adderley insists the Court of Appeal is one of the highest functioning courts in the country, but he also admits that there are some challenges along the way. The Court of Appeal Justice was speaking to members of the Rotary Club of Southeast Nassau when he made the comments. He added that despite the belief that many cases are appealed at the Privy Council, the truth is that the majority of cases are handled at the appeals court. Except for murder, judicial review, or extradition cases, the Court of Appeal is the final Court of Appeal for over 90% of matters that come before our courts in the Bahamas. Only a relatively small number of appeals make their way to the Privy Council. But while he says the Court of Appeal is highly efficient, Adderley admits there are some challenges. According to Justice Adderley, some delays simply have to do with the justice system, such as the ones caused by late transcripts, which are vital in the COA process. Unavailability of transcripts is increasing in frequency, says Adderley. Certainly it comes up in appeals where the transcripts, the availability of the transcripts are becoming an issue in the sense that if a person appeals against his conviction, not so much a sentence, if a person appeals against his conviction, uh, counsel are reluctant to proceed and would generally not agree to proceed unless they have the full transcripts. If the transcripts are not ready, uh, then um, the matter will not proceed. So it has to be adjourned until the transcripts are ready. So that's an issue. Still, he says the vast amount of delays are caused by lawyers. Some delays are caused by the system. In my experience, the vast number of the amount of delays are caused by the lawyers who are coming for adjournments. And mind you, the adjournments are not, there are good reasons for the adjournments, but they ask for, for adjournment. A, a judge gives an adjournment, well, of course, the judge has a calendar. So if you came for an adjournment today, the judge may not be able to set you down for another six months. Despite the setbacks, Adderley says when it comes to the Court of Appeal, there is no backlog of cases, as is often the case in the lower courts. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. Well, the Minister of National Security would like to see a return of a gun amnesty in the country. However, he says the concept has been met with some resistance. A gun amnesty and buyback program were among some of the initiatives being considered last September when the country saw a dramatic rise in the number of murders and violent attacks. But Nottage says some stakeholders may need more convincing. We've had um, some resistance, let me say. Um, from, our, from our partners in terms of the value of, of, of um, the program. And, um, but it, it, I'm, I'm very strongly in favor of a gun amnesty program. Uh, and we, so we'll see how that, how that works. According to statistics from the Royal Bahamas Police Force, more than 70 firearms and nearly 1,500 rounds of ammunition have been seized so far this year. Last year, just over 400 guns were confiscated in the country, along with nearly 6,500 rounds of ammunition. Among the firearms seized were revolvers, shotguns and rifles. 
The Ingram administration introduced a gun amnesty back in 2011, which saw 75 guns turned over to police in one month. During that same year, police seized more than 500 guns and 11,000 rounds of ammunition. While the introduction of a gun amnesty program is still up in the air, Nottage says government is amping up its efforts through Operation Ceasefire. Cabinet has approved the introduction of two additional elements to step up Operation Ceasefire. The first involves the introduction of violence breakers and the second, shock treatment. These are persons who themselves may have had uh, brushes with the law or have been considered uh, offenders who have reformed their lives and who are to assist in helping to work with young people to see if we can guide them in a different direction from which they're going. We are taking young persons who are going uh, astray and seeking to introduce them to both sides of, of life. What happens when you when you offend the law and what happens when you obey the law. And so we think we expect those two programs to make a, a significant have a significant impact. Operation Ceasefire was introduced as part of the Progressive Liberal Party's Charter for Governance. The program proposed an intense law enforcement focus on repeat offenders and the most violent criminals, as well as saturation patrols in crime hotspots. Meanwhile, government continues to study the effectiveness of programs that have been implemented abroad to help reduce crime. We had a seminar last week talking about data collection in crime and how we can use that to help us with crime. And we've sought uh, information from other, other persons from other countries, from Scotland, from, from Trinidad, from Jamaica, on initiatives that they have introduced to see the extent to which they've been successful for them and, and how, how they can work for us. In January, police revealed that murders were up 7% over 2012, but overall crime was down 8%. The Commissioner of Police's 2014 crime plan includes efforts to prevent and decrease crime, reduce the fear of crime, and working with young people. In recent years, the Camp Road community has gained a reputation for the many violent incidents that occurred there. But officials at the Camp Road Urban Renewal Office say they are working to reduce the stigma that has become steadily attached to the community. Center Manager Inspector Kendall Smith says the role of the Urban Renewal Program is not solely to address crime, but also to help those in need. He says it's a mandate they take as seriously as all others. People are coming to Urban Renewal for help. But he admits the social development program is not able to help everyone. He adds that in many of those cases, there is a need for referrals. When it is beyond us, as uh, myself, the center manager, I have a number of other agencies that I can refer them to. And so their problem could be solved just through referral. According to Smith, over the last year and a half, they have forged strong partnerships with social workers, the defense force, and activists in the community. He adds the partnerships have been vital to the program's success. And government has hit a delay in its move to shut down Cash for Gold businesses that officials believe may be involved with money laundering. Minister of National Security Dr. Bernard Nottage says government has met some challenges in seeking a solution to the issue. We, we are going to have them shut down eventually. But there are some issues uh, which we have to um, clarify. People uh, have a right to be in business, and they have a right to be in legitimate businesses. And uh, we, are, we have been looking at, and, and we, we've listened to those who are involved in the cash for gold business, and uh, you know they put to us that they are not seeking to, to violate the law, and that they cooperate with the police, etc. So we look, we're looking at that. Um, we haven't given up on that, but we just haven't been able to clarify how, how to get it done, that it would be fair to those who are business persons as well as to the general public. He notes that many of the businesses are committed to working with government to have the concerns addressed. Late last year, Nottage revealed that government drafted a bill to deal with cash for gold enterprises. Nottage claimed there was money laundering occurring at those businesses. During the first half of 2013, of the 506 armed robberies committed, 299 or 59% of them involved jewelry or copper theft. Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade has indicated that his hands are tied when dealing with suspected stolen goods at cash for gold businesses as they are fully licensed by government. 
Mobile services for prepaid and postpaid customers are back online today after a massive system blackout yesterday. Now Bahamas Telecommunications Company officials say the company will provide some measure of compensation for affected customers, the details of which will be released in the coming days. Meanwhile, BTC is warning that mobile customers may face congestion in some areas of the country as the network comes fully online. Thousands of cellular, landline and internet customers throughout the country were left with little or no service Saturday. BTC has not released information regarding the cause of the system failure. Coming up, one of the most common concerns when it comes to value-added tax.